how does laser compare to these other types of non-surgical treatments in efficacy and in practice? Okay, this is a very good question because you know that I'm an endocrine surgeon. I'm not an interventional radiologist. I'm not an endocrinologist. So I apply this treatment besides surgery and I apply surgery with the right indications for tumors, for very, very large compressive goiters, very complicated. And besides surgery, I use all the thermoablative techniques that we have in our uh, availability in the hospital and in my clinic. Uh, you have to consider that now laser and RFA are the two main alternative treatment option besides surgery for the treatment of benign compressive goiters and for aesthetic discomfort. So this is uh, assumed by the scientific literature and is uh, inserted in all the international guidelines. So it's an approved procedure. We don't need more approval for this. When we decide to use one or the other technique, we have to consider that the, the cysts of the thyroid gland can be a great efficacy treated by PI, percutaneous ethanol injection. This is the gold standard must not be operated anymore because they can be treated very efficient way with this technique. When we have multinodular goiter or nodule that can be treated by, because they are solid, because they are mixed, but with a solid dominant component inside, we decide to use laser or RFA. We have both in our disponibility, but think that this is uh, this derived from the, the, the talk that you have uh, with the patients explaining everything mainly, but also derived from your skill with all the cases that you have previously treated, trying to tailor the right treatment to fit to the volume and to the shape of the nodule. So there are some cases that in your expertise need laser, in other cases need to be treated with radiofrequency thermal ablation. When we apply this technique, uh, we have to consider also the ana anamnestic factors of the patients and the comorbidity of the patient. Both are effective also in patients with comorbidity, respiratory distress, cardiological problems, uh, metabolic syndrome that are contraindication, general anesthesia. So you can offer this kind of treatment. If you have uh, a, a patient uh, that is a pacemaker older, for example, or defibrillator permanent defibrillator older, you can use radiofrequency thermal ablation due to the transmission of energy from the antenna, the device, the needle that we use through the body of the patient, unless you don't use uh, the bipolar system, but in the USA is not yet approved. So we can only use by radiofrequency thermal ablation, the monopolar system. And in these cases, we need to use laser because laser is a focused beam of local energy without transmission of energy along the body. So doesn't affect the, the heart function during the procedure or in pregnancies. So in these cases, RFA is contraindicated to the potential energy effects on the fetus, while laser is local, is safe because the delivery of energy is always local. So this is indicate absolute, absolute indication for thermal ablation. We have to inform the patients, but mainly the doctors, that both are very effective, both are safe, but are safe if we use and we strictly observe the protocol. Because even if complications are very rare, they can be very severe because can affect the vital structure, the vessel, the trachea, the esophagus, and the laryngeal nerve. So be careful, be very careful when doing that.